When I woke up that morning, just like every other morning since applying, the first thing I did was check the Waterloo Discord server to see if anyone had gotten any offers from UWCS. And just like every other day for the past four months, no one got any offers. So I woke up again the next day, but this time it was the second Tuesday of May, the time when traditionally the offers have come out for Waterloo CS. As I was checking the Discord, however, I came to a sudden realization. They didn't come out. So I woke up again the next day, same old routine. I checked Discord, but this time it was a little different. This time I had seen that people were getting offers. Feeling extremely excited, I rushed over to open my laptop and see if I had also gotten an offer. But unfortunately, as I opened up my screen and typed my login details into the portal, I had seen not just a rejection from the CS program, but a deferral to UW Geomatics. In that moment, I felt like an absolute loser. This was my dream program. What did I work so hard for? I didn't know what to do, so I did the only thing I could do to cope. I'm a little ashamed now, but that thing was going into my kitchen and pouring myself a drink. Apple juice! Nah, I'm just playing. This is how it actually went. Alright, we're gonna find out. Oh. UW or no UW? We're gonna find out. We're out no UAC right now. Roger's out no UAC for me, because I don't want to look. Okay, uh, offer from Carlton and Western. No water Woo, you got it! Oh, shit. All right, so no Waterloo. How to get rejected from Waterloo CS? Water get re yeah, getting rejected from your dream program sucks. I remember throughout all of high school, really, my goal had always been the University of Waterloo. I remember how I would watch all these YouTube videos with people talking about their academics, their extracurriculars, what they did differently to stand out. And because I saw how competitive the application process could be, I don't think I was going as hard in school as I ever did in my senior year. My grades were definitely not as high as the overall pool of applicants though. I'm not, I wasn't as academically gifted as uh, some people I've seen with 98, 99 averages. My average was a 93.7, which is on the low end of things. And yes, Waterloo does go by the decimal in case you were wondering. I took part in a lot of extracurriculars throughout high school as well and wrote all of Waterloo's math contests since grade 11. Again, I never went so hard in school as I was going in my senior year. In hindsight, maybe I should have slept in more, but it is what it is. Regardless, this video, this project is dedicated to all my fellow Waterloo rejects. So if that's you, or if you're applying this year as well, please enjoy some of my thoughts and reflections since then. I would say number one, that there are so many circumstances outside of your control, and that no matter what, luck does play a role in the application process. No matter how much you might not want to believe that, no matter how much I don't want to believe that sometimes, luck does play a role. You have to realize that circumstances outside of your control exist. In a program with a 4.3% acceptance rate, it is already going to be extremely difficult to beat the odds. You might think that maybe if I had just not messed up on that one test or if I had worked a little bit harder, I may have made the cut. And you may be right, but in the grand scheme of things, if the program acceptance rate is already that low, and there are, I believe, at least 10,000 applicants every year, it's going to be extremely difficult to make the cut. I would say that COVID really messed things up for us as well. UW actually sent out more offers than they would have usually in the 2019, 2020 year. So maybe that may have been a factor in them not sending out so many offers in subsequent years. I'm not making excuses for anyone or saying that you shouldn't try because I actually believe that even if the odds are that much against you, you should still try. You know, be a dreamer, challenge yourself, work hard and strive for things. Always go in with 110% effort, but have the realization that you may not achieve your goal. And that's okay, because it's how you pivot that makes all the difference. I remember being in sort of a rut for a couple of days after getting rejected, because with Waterloo, you can get internships uh, much easier than maybe other schools. And such a major part of the career path that I had laid out for myself was now in sh shambles. So it really affected how I looked at a future career in tech. But I did run into an older friend of mine who is in Waterloo CS program. And he said something that really stood out to me. He said that your focus in life should not be your school, but it should be your actual career. And I don't think a lot of people really reflect on that. You know, it's okay to be upset. 
and feel a little bit down that you may have not gotten into the program you wanted to. But really, in the grand scheme of things like a career, a couple of years of undergrad does not define you at all. What really defines you is what you do with the cards you're given, how you pivot and react to adversity. So what if you didn't get into your WCS? If you work hard and give your all, you can still make it in tech. Just because your school may not have as good of a co-op portal as UW does not mean that you cannot apply to internships on your own. Anyways, I'm going off on a tangent, but my point is that the school you go to does not define you, you define you. Whenever you hit an obstacle in life, your first instinct should never be to give up. Rather, use your failure as motivation. If you didn't achieve your goal this time, go 10 times harder the next time. And this isn't just applicable to school, it's applicable to all aspects in your life. Just because you failed once does not necessarily mean that you will fail again. So just continue to put in effort, try your best, and don't let this failure or this obstacle in your life stop you from being an ambitious person and setting high goals. Sure, you may not have the name of Waterloo or the benefit of having access to their co-op portal, but you do have your individual ability. And your individual ability is what you should be relying on the most anyway. I think most of us drastically underestimate our individual ability and the effect that compounding actions can have as long as we put in a little bit of effort every single day, we will see progress and we will see success. For instance, let's say that you also want those Waterloo internships. You just have to go 10 times harder on your side projects than someone who might go to Waterloo. And who knows, maybe because of that fact that you put in more effort, you're actually more qualified than someone who only has a school name to show for it. Don't underestimate the result of compounding actions. A lot of successful people, people you might look up to, people that you see in the business world, for instance, faced dozens, if not hundreds of rejections. Howard Schultz, the man who would go on to found Starbucks, was rejected by 217 of the 242 investors he approached with his business idea. Can you imagine if he had quit the 216th time and just said that this isn't for him? My former boss, Sam Demma, who is a motivational speaker, was rejected by 970 schools that he approached in his first year of speaking. He wouldn't have near the amount of success that he is enjoying today if he had quit his craft in that first year and said this isn't for him. So make sure that you don't let your drive extinguish, that fire inside of you extinguish, just because you failed once. Failure is a natural part of life. Embrace it and let it blossom into your future success. You have to be willing to taste a little bit of failure, a couple of bitter rejections before you can taste that sweet, sweet success. I got better, I got better, I got better. You sure? Alright, yeah. let's just see which one will go better. Yeah, that's true. Wagwan. Welcome back to the episode of The Roger View. On today's episode, Roger's camera yet. is followed. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, put it so it's... Um, I'm applying to Waterloo CS. I remember watching all these videos when I was in grade 10 and 11. Now I'm in grade 12 applying. How people got in, their reactions. So I wanted to hop on the train as well. I hey have guys, all my friends here. Before before we get in uh, started, my name is Castro, and I, I'm dropping a new single Friday the 13th. What's mine? What's called What's Mine? Thank What's you, mine? Abdul. And um, yeah, hopefully it blows up. I'm gonna start a new music career. Hopefully, wish me luck, guys. And yeah, by the time this video drops, it should be on SoundCloud. What's mine, Castro? W. Want to introduce yourself? So, my name is Abisham. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, my name's my name's Raj, uh, the most brown name ever. I actually got in. I forgot to mention that. Yeah. I got into Waterloo too, but that was her life sentence. So uh, I got into CS. I got into Laurier for BBA, but I'm not going there anytime soon. Probably gonna catch me at Carleton or Ontario Tech or somewhere, I'm going or to UFT. maybe maybe UFT. We're both going to UFT. Wait, so I have a, like like I all three of us question. are going to UFT. Yeah. So BBA is business, right? Bachelor yeah. of Business. So yeah. like. <laughs> are you not hot? Yeah. You're hot. You're hot. Uh, <laughs> That's so it, guys. This is what transitions into the.